Oh, hey, uh, my name's Ben, and uh, there's a lot of math and science that's around us all over the place. And if you're just observant, and, well, maybe you carry around a camera like this, you might be able to capture a lot of it and use it in your classroom to help engage your students, or even use it as a way for your students to try and make sense of the world around them with what they're learning in their classroom every day. Traditional word or story problems typically aren't that engaging, and they quite often don't have any real-world application to our students. The idea behind video story problems is that they're not only more engaging, but you can actually start to bring real-world applications of math and science into your classroom. The concept is actually pretty simple. Basically, get some video cameras, add some students, and you can create some really excellent student-driven learning experiences. In other words, rather than relying on the content and the resources that are in your textbooks that might not be very applicable to the real world, we're going to use resources from the real world and pull them into your classroom, not only to engage your students, but also to offer them something that's a little bit more applicable when they leave your classroom. So for example, if you were to go to the supermarket and here's some green peppers, two for 99 cents. That's an excellent opportunity to talk about fractions or even to bring in some science content, talk about eating healthy and, and, and what good foods are. Now the steps behind creating a video story problem are actually pretty simple. The first one being carry a camera around with you. Now I carry my iPhone with me almost all the time and for anyone that has a smartphone you probably have a pretty good camera with you at all times anyways to go ahead and capture footage. The second thing is a little bit more difficult. You want to be observant. So even some of the most mundane routines that you go through every single day can be an excellent resource for pulling video story problems out. And of course, capturing curiosity is huge because if you're genuinely curious about something and you can bring that into your classroom, then the students are going to pick up on that and they'll be able to feed off of your curiosity. It also helps encourage students to be curious about what they see around them and allow them to bring in some of their own curiosity and some of their own interest into the classroom. Take a look at this uh, video story problem in which I capture some genuine curiosity about some syrup left over in the teacher's lounge. Hey guys, Mr. Rhymes here, and I have a question for you. You see, we just finished doing um, the annual fifth grade holiday breakfast. We finished cleaning up for it, and we've got a lot of syrup left over here behind me. And I'm curious, can you estimate how much syrup was used during the, uh, the fifth grade holiday breakfast. Okay, so here we go. Let me zoom in. There you go. And uh, I know what you're thinking. Oh my gosh, uh, that's a ridiculous amount of syrup. Well, you know, actually we have 11 fifth grade classrooms in this building here. Okay, so that's, uh, we, we need a lot of syrup. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull out here, give you a shot of all of them. There you go. And okay, just to be fair, I'll give you a couple numbers, right? The small bottles right here, they have about 24 fluid ounces. See that right there? So 24 fluid ounces. Uh, and the large bottles, they have about 36 fluid ounces. 36 fluid ounces for the big ones, 24 for the small ones. Ladies and gentlemen, those are the only numbers I'm giving you. There are other numbers you got to kind of just figure out for yourself and uh, go ahead and do some estimating of how much syrup we have left over. All right, so there you go, and uh, try not to get sticky fingers while you are estimating this, uh, this problem. See ya. Now, not everybody's going to be able to follow these three steps. So, there's another way of setting up a video story problem. You could go ahead and just start with a simple problem, maybe one that you already have in a textbook or some other resource pack. Then get the students to write a script about it. Think of it as a way for them to do a little bit of uh, reader's theater, putting on a skit, or maybe putting together something that's going to help other students better understand a concept. And then three shoot your video story problem. You don't have to be out in the real world to capture some of these ideas. You can recreate them within your classroom. Here's an example right now of some students doing just that. How many Skittles? My cousin had 58 pieces of Skittles. My brother had 25 less 
pieces than my cousin. I had 85 more than my cousin and brother combined. How many Skittles do I have and how many do we all have together? Good luck! Okay, here's some tips if you want to start creating some video story problems on your own. The first one being model the thought process by talking out loud. Now a lot of teachers already do this as we go ahead and present new concepts and new ideas or if we're working with uh, particular math problems or concepts the students haven't worked with before we'll talk out loud so sort of model uh, what we're thinking. Take a look at this example of one student doing just that as he goes out to eat with his family. Hi guys, my name is Caleb and today I am at Main Street. This is my meal. It is the fajita. This is my sister's meal. It's a wrap. That's my brother's meal. It's chicken tenders. That's my mom's meal. It's a burger. And that's my sister's meal. And it's mac and cheese. Tonight we went out to eat to Main Street. And this is what our meal cost. Jacob had chicken tenders for $3.99. He added sweet potatoes fries that cost us a dollar and nine cents extra. Kennedy had macaroni and cheese and hers cost $3.99. I had a Cabo burger that cost $7.99. Mackenzie had a hornet wrap and that also cost seven dollars and ninety-nine cents. Now another example would be uh, trying to find real-world examples of math or science in action. Check out this example of high school teacher Brian Bennett down in the Evansville, Indiana asking a genuine real-world uh, science question. So here I've got some uh, hydrogen peroxide. Okay, it's in the dark bottle. and. Um, you know, I need to use some of it later, but I've got, this is a 30% solution. Um, you know, if, I know that hydrogen peroxide decomposes on its own, you know, it's unstable, you know, there's thermodynamics into that. But I'm wondering if, if I need to get it down to a 10% solution, uh, is there a way I can speed it up rather than just leaving it out in its own? Um, I don't know if you, if you guys can help me with that, but, uh, but I really appreciate the help. So again, uh, I've got 30%, I need it down to 10%, is, is, how, can I, how can I speed that up? The last tip is asking open-ended or multiple questions. Typically in textbooks you have one answer and one question and those questions and answers go together perfectly. But in the real world it's not always that easy. Sometimes questions lead to other questions or sometimes answers that you arrive at cause you to go back and rephrase the original questions. Here's an example of an excellent video story problem by students in Tyler Hart's third grade classroom down in Virginia. The students in this video story problem present some information and then ask other students to write some questions in response to it. The most important thing about the video story problems is the ability to share. Now you can certainly share within your classroom, but it's much more powerful to take these videos and share them online. The first place that you could go to is YouTube. Now I like YouTube because it's going to give you the biggest audience, now, but I understand that in a lot of school districts YouTube is blocked and it's not always going to be a viable way of sharing your videos. I actually use Vimeo partially because it is unblocked in my school district, but also because it's much less commercial than YouTube. There are no pre-roll commercials or advertisements. There are no little advertisements popping up on the videos. All of the advertisements on video are link advertisements, and they're over in the sidebar. So your video is all about your video. 
A lot of schools also use SchoolTube. Now this is a free video service and the nice thing about this is that all of the video content that goes up there is all moderated. So whatever you put up there someone else from your school district has seen and approved. So you don't have to worry about anything inappropriate getting up there. This would probably be the safest way to share your video story problems. It's, you're not going to have as big of an audience as you would on Vimeo and YouTube but again some school districts uh, rely heavily on that safety aspect. Now the last thing I want to share with you is about the video story problem channel itself. So like I said I have an account on Vimeo and I actually started a channel called the video story problem channel which I'd like to show to you right now. This is the video story problem channel on Vimeo and the reason I created it is because I was looking for a way for all of these teachers and students that were creating video story problems to sort of celebrate them and put them together. So we use this channel as a way to share all of our videos and uh, easily bring them into our classrooms. So if I scroll down here you'll see that even though I created this channel you'll see over here there are 11 moderators and we have teachers from all around the country from Michigan, Indiana, Virginia and several other places that are contributing to this video story problem. Currently there are about 83 videos. There's a nice little shout box here where people can go ahead and comment about the videos and it's really easy to just simply scroll through all the videos on the channel and watch them. So if I decided that I wanted to see one of these video story problems from Mr. Osborne's class, I could click on it right here. It's going to pop up right here in the video and I can go ahead and watch it with my students. Now if I'd like to, I could even click on the title of this video and I could go leave comments if I have a Vimeo account. Uh, this is something that some of the classrooms actually have started to do. Uh, they leave comments about how they solve the video story problems or ideas about how to make some of their own video story problems. If you're interested in getting involved with the video story problems, and I hope that maybe you've got a couple ideas that have inspired you to try some, go ahead and check out my blog, www.techsavvyed.net. I share all of the video story problems that I've created via my blog, as well as highlight some of the video story problems that uh, I notice on the channel that I think deserve special recognition because they go above and beyond just the simple concept of providing a story problem. If you'd like to, you can follow me on Twitter, at TechSavvyEd, where I tweet not just about video story problems, but all sorts of practical ways of using technology in the classroom. Or, if you'd like to go ahead and become a part of the channel itself, head over to the Video Story Problem channel, vimeo.com slash channels slash video story problems. If you already have a Vimeo account, you can go ahead and become my contact on Vimeo and I can add you as a moderator of the channel which would then give you the ability to add your own video story problems directly to the channel. And if you don't have an account on Vimeo yet, that's okay, it's free. Ooh, razzleberry pie. Oh, hey! Well, I hope you got uh, plenty of ideas for uh, how to take math and science that's around us pretty much everywhere and bring it into your classroom. And not just to make it more engaging for your students, but also to make the learning that much more practical too. Well, I've, uh, I've got a little bit more shopping left to do, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish that up. See you around.